Good morning. Are we going to plant something today? I sure hope so, but we got to go look at the field again. So on the bright side, corn broke seven bucks this morning. Stuff's up big again for the moment. We'll see what happens the rest of the day, but it's, these grain markets are just crazy. Well, let's go out here and look at this field today. Um, I'm hoping to come here maybe later this afternoon. It looks drier on top this morning than it did yesterday morning. That's a good sign. If you watched yesterday's video, I talked about how our moisture kind of wicks up through the ground overnight. So if it's damp on top in the morning, there's still moisture in it. If it gets dry on top, it usually means it's, it's, it's good to go. But we are going to stick a shovel in here. My good dirt digging shovel. All I can find. This spot doesn't look too bad. It looks a little sandy right here. Yeah, this is good. This is very good, but it is sort of sandy. So, if it all looks like that, no question we're getting the corn planter. We need to go down there and clear over in that corner and see what things look like. All right, let's see what this low ground looks like. Not as dry, but that doesn't look too bad, to be honest. That's okay. That's not as good. This doesn't have the sand content in it, but I'll plant that. All right, let's look in this corner. So we were out behind that barn and we walked back over that side on the other side of this hill. Now this corner here is where I came yesterday morning. We stuck the shovel in the ground and instantly said, nope, it's too wet. Let's see how much it's changed in a day. We're gonna come right over here. Yeah, wetter than where we just were, but maybe not terrible. Ugh, that's, uh, most of this is okay. It's just when you get down in this deeper stuff, that's wet. Now this is a fairly small spot here and I have always said, don't let the last 5% of the field hold you up when 95% of it is good to go. So. I think, I'm going to walk a little bit farther, but uh, I think, given that that's a lot better than it was yesterday, um, and the other two spots that I checked were good, we'll see what the next spot is, but we, we are probably going to plant this today. Oh, this is better. This is, is somewhat better. Than, than that hole right over there. So it's a pretty small area in that corner that's probably a little too wet, but uh, we're gonna give this one, well, we're gonna go look at another field and make our order up later, but this field will be planted by the end of the day. All right, so this field here is, uh, I think there's 75, 76 acres in it, something like that. Um, we pattern tiled it here about three years ago. This will be the third crop since it's been tiled, I guess. And um, so it should be one of our drier ones. Plus, a lot of it is a hill that, that sets pretty high and drains well naturally. So uh, that's why I thought this one might be one of our first to go here. Pretty good farm since we tiled it. So, um, you know, I'm super antsy to get going. And watching all the neighbors work yesterday was extremely difficult. But I think they jumped the gun, at least if their conditions were the same as ours. Maybe they weren't, I don't know. Oops, sorry. But um, the, the, the grain markets right now dictate that you don't do anything stupid to cost yourself a ton of bushels because as important as it is to produce every bushel you can when corn is 350, 
it compounds itself when corn is five, six dollars, which is what new crop stuff is, somewhere in a five dollar range. And it's so important to get every bushel possible. Um, so I don't want to make a mistake here. I don't want to do something I'm going to regret. And I have enough experience to know that if I plant these fields wet, you will see every single planter, tire, tractor, track all the way across that field all year, all year. And uh, that costs bushels because we're compacting that ground when the roots can't grow through the soil and they can't find the nutrients, they can't find the water. If we turn off dry late in the season, it's gonna compound that issue. And so we have to do everything we can now to do it right and not push it. Um, but it's all a gamble, right? I have no idea what the weather's gonna do the next two, three weeks. And if it turns off wet, I'll wish that I would have pushed it harder now. If it, if it turns off a little bit drier and we get really good planting conditions, I'm gonna kick myself for starting a day too soon. It's just the way it is, and you don't know. Okay, I'm on to the next field. This is one that we were in yesterday. There's the hole I dug yesterday right over there. Look what I found. We don't need that laying out here, do we? Well, let's see what we got right here. That looks good. When you dump the shovel and the dirt all breaks apart like that, it's generally a good sign. That one, however, yeah, that's not bad. That's not bad at all. This is much different than yesterday. Good sign. All right, let's go check the low spot, and then let's go get the corn planter. So this field is one that we had worked last uh, March, back in March, like a week, a month ago, right? And it's very soft. This dirt is mellow. It's gonna plant beautifully. Very soft. That's a little bit gooey down deep. We're in the worst spot on the farm, or about the worst spot. Uh, if it all was like this, I would not plant it. It's not all like this. <sighs> okay, well, after a little bit more uh, digging and inspection on this field, it is close. That low ground behind me, dark dirt there, it's a little wet. The rest of it is fine. Um, I kind of think that last field that we were in is actually just a little bit drier, actually. And so we're gonna go there. And then we're gonna come here this afternoon. <sighs> That's what we're gonna do. A lot of people back when we were doing all that tillage in uh, March questioned why we were doing it so far ahead of planting and whether or not it was gonna make our ground dry out slower or differently than um, if we hadn't done that. And well, here's what I can tell you. Um, if I had to do tillage on this, we wouldn't be out there right now. Or I would not be thinking about doing it today because it's it's too wet for that. I don't need the ground to be quite as dry to plant as I do to run a field cultivator through it or a disc through it. And so uh, I actually think doing all that tillage still really helped us because I have a lot of ground that's ready to plant from a tillage standpoint, and we just need a day or so for things to dry out a little bit more. And, and just from yesterday to today, things dried out a ton, and it wasn't even that great of a day yesterday. Like the sun came out and it was decent in the afternoon, but uh, today's supposed to be almost 80 and partly cloudy, or there's gonna be some sun, so it's gonna warm up and dry things out a lot today. Question is what time is it gonna rain tomorrow and how much can we get done before that, so. Uh, I still think that doing all that tillage was the right thing to do. I am glad we did it, and we're going to start getting some field work done, uh, some crops in the ground here today. Um, Phil was just leaving to haul a load of uh, corn in this morning. Um, I assume when he gets back, he'll look around and see if we can't plant some more beans somewhere. So that's the plan. Let's go get the corn planter ready to go. we got to load up seed. we got to load up fertilizer and uh, all that good stuff. Dad's getting the beans sprayed. He's loading up now, so he's kind of in our way for fertilizer, but we'll get our seed around here. Uh, good news, both of those fields are getting the same variety, which is awesome and makes it a lot easier because that means we don't have to worry about cleaning the planter out between them or getting it empty exactly or any of that. We pretty much can just load it up and uh, go plant. So that is good. So I'm gonna get the uh, variety that we want put on the tender and we'll get the tractor started and get that pulled around and we'll start getting everything loaded up. 
All right, let's get our fertilizer loaded up. So we are going to this field here, and if I follow it across, we need a total of 992 gallons of starter. So we need uh, 198, basically 200 gallons of the ATS from that tank. We need 787 from the middle tank. And then we need 6.6 .6 gallons of each of those two shuttles. So I'm gonna get stuff fired up and start mixing and pumping it into there. Okay, I put the 200 gallons of the ATS in first. Now we're pumping in the 1034-0 in sulfur. And I'm adding uh, right now the boron to my uh, inductor cone here. So when this gets to 6.6, .6, we're gonna shut it off and then we'll suck that in and then we'll do the zinc. That one. Close enough. So now if I uh, open this valve and close this one a little bit at least, it sucks it out of this tank. And puts it into our, uh, our thing there and it's mixing as it goes. And as soon as it sucks dry, Close this, open that one back up. Now we're back to the 10th order for all and we can load our zinc in here. And again, we need 6.6 .6 gallons. That's enough for about a quart to the acre. Okay, those are all sucked in and we need about a thousand gallons total. So we'll just use the mark on our tank when it gets up to there, we can shut it off. That's gonna take it a minute. So I'm gonna get the seed tender and pull it around so we can get ready to put the seed in. So we are gonna need more than just this one box of this variety here today, but this one box will plant all of the first field that we are going to. And since we'll have to drive right past the farm here to get to the second one, we're gonna stop and reload. Uh, we'll need fertilizer anyway, so we're just gonna put this one in for now. Loading. This is where it would be helpful to have a working scale so that I know when I got half the box but I don't, so we get. And I'm watching the fertilizer. That line is 800 gallons, 1600 gallon tank. So that's, that's 800, we need 200 more. Ran. Dang, that's a pretty good camera, watch this. Not bad, huh? Okay, we are loaded up and ready to go. I noticed that my uh, pin keeper here was missing. And I put one in there before we did the last fields. It's a different style, it was the spring clip. So we'll stick that in there, hopefully that'll stay. Let's go plant corn. Off we go. I'm gonna give it a minute to build up some down pressure in the airbags because that all leaks off after you set for a few days. And watch the uh, auto steer here real closely because I don't trust it on this edge. But uh, yeah, we're planting. All right, well, we've got the end rows done, making the second pass along the road. Pretty good spot to get out and check, make sure that uh, we're getting it deep enough and everything is working like it's supposed to. Everything looks okay to me from here. We'll do a little digging. There. It's plenty deep. Let's see if we can find another one over here without disturbing it. Right there. So we're a uh, solid two inches. Maybe two and a quarter. I'm okay with that. I'm not gonna complain about being two to just a little over two. My dad would tell you second knuckle, right? You want to plant that deep? I don't know. It's pretty close. Well, now I get to battle electric poles. <sighs> fun, fun. They're right in the middle of the next planter pass too. They can't even, can't even be, you know, right between two planter passes where I can swerve around them. No. And that one's not quite as in the middle as the other ones down there have been. But, um, yeah, not fun. 
All right, so I am uh, working around these poles. I've already planted a couple of passes on the other side of them there. And this is kind of how I have decided the best way to do this when they split the middle is to actually do a half a planter pass. So I'm manually driving this, but, uh, and then I just kind of swerve around them. When I come back the other side, I won't have to swerve around it because the planter will clear it. But um, I don't know. I don't know if this is the best way to do it or not. I, I hate curved rows but there's not much I can do. So I'll, I'll plant this half of the pass going this way, and then we'll turn around and plant the other half going back the other way. And um, uh, at least only half the pass will have to curve around the poles and not the whole thing. And it's a little bit easier to do this way, I think. All right, we're headed back doing the other side. And my guess from the off there but it should be fairly close but now you can see since that one the pole is pushed over that way uh, I don't actually have to curve these rows and just, uh, just fill the gaps we're missing a little bit but it's, I just I can't really do much else so um, a pain but we've got them and once we're past these then the rest of the field pretty much is clear sailing there are a couple of poles on the other end along the, the other side road but uh yeah nice big open fields go faster once you get past the obstacles there goes the neighbor going to plant some beans never mind me just getting comfy here according to my uh, monitor row two here is not planted Let's see what's going on. We're gonna shake our hoses, see if we can figure out why I'm not getting any seed into that row. There it goes. I don't know if you guys can hear that. I just wiggled the hose and it'll go. So we have a big fan in the back there that blows air underneath through here to get it, the seed through these hoses. And uh, we can adjust the pressure in that. With that knob right there, there's a gauge right here. And that's not bad. I may turn it up just a little bit. If um, if your seed doesn't blow out of the tanks, you usually want to turn the pressure up. If you go too high, it will actually plug up at these elbows and won't flow into the tank. And that's because you're forcing it in there too hard and it just it doesn't make the transition. So it's a balancing act here. You don't want to go too far. found a rock I had to stop and get it not this one that one I would not have stopped for but I'm here so we'll pile it with the one that I had to stop and move out of the way for that one I'll uh, set it up in between the rows like that so it's sticking up and I can see it we'll come back up here with the gator and get it look it's our fertilizer band and our seed <laughs> That's what happens when there's a rock in the way. I went real slow over it so that I didn't break anything and wanted to get it so I could get it out of the way. There's another one I saw somewhere over here. Oh, over there. We'll have to stop and get to that one when we get to it. But uh, yeah, they're too big for me to carry. It's too far to the side. I'm not carrying it that far. We'll just get them out of the way and come back up here with the gator later. We must have had a really good rock growing season this winter. They are everywhere in this field. This is the fifth one that's big enough that I've had to stop, slow down. I don't even know if I can move that one. Jeez! Is it right between a row? Be right between a row. It's not. Ah. Well, I lifted the planter over that one because that one would have done damage. Usually you can slow down and throw a roll right across, but that one stuck up high enough. But, uh, nope, not going to hit that one. Imagine if I had a high-speed planter at 10 miles an hour and hit that. That would cause some damage wouldn't it but we are gonna have to make a trip up here with the gator or maybe even the backhoe and pick up rocks maybe we'll let brock do that hey brock i got some rocks for you to pick up we've got to do it before we come up here in side dress because i put all those rocks right in the middle of the rows where the anhydrous row units are going to run and i don't want to hit them with that new bar that will break stuff so yeah now we got to pick them up Okay, I am down to the last couple of rounds here. I am making my pass along this east edge of this field. Um, like I do with the beans, I like to have two planter passes that are parallel with the outside edge. 
and then have my guest rows uh, inside there a little farther so that uh, dad can follow my wheel tracks and in this case the marker mark with the sprayer and uh, he'll know he, he is in exactly the right spot. So uh, when we get done here, we're heading back to the farm. We've got to load up more seed, same variety, more fertilizer, because, well, our tank's about empty back there, which is a good thing. Um, and uh, we're gonna head to the next field. There's 88 acres in the next one. Um, Dad is off scouting the potential next field after that for me right now. If he says that that one is good to go, we're probably gonna load up our tender uh, truck seed tender and fertilizer tender, two, two different, um, and take that to the next field because we will go straight there from the next one, uh, or go, yeah, where he's scouting now. We'll go straight there from the next field, um, and we'll need that stuff down there. So we'll see what it looks like when we get back to the farm and I hear from Dad. Well, there's 75 acres done. Let's get out of here and go load up for the next field. It's two o'clock, so we're gonna try and do this quickly because we got a lot to do today yet, but uh, it's gonna take me a minute. Phil's getting the bean planter out, that's good. All right, it's getting warm out, I'm sweating a little bit, but um, we are loaded up. We've got what we need to do the next field, more than we need, but that's what happens when my scale doesn't work on my dang tender and I'm not happy about it. Anyway, we're gonna go plant that and then um, Dad is going to move the seed tender and a pallet of bags that I have that needs to go to the field after that. Um, he's going to get that moved and I'm going to tell him what I need on the fertilizer tender. He's going to get that down there for me. We're in for a long night. It's setting up to uh, like we might get done by the time it starts raining in the morning. But we'll have over 300 acres done by the end of the day if everything goes all right here. So. Anyway, on to the next 88, and we'll keep moving, and we'll see how things go from there. Planting. All right, so we're off and rolling here. I uh, had a little trouble getting set up because I uh, was going to load my script for my fertilizer, which is what I use this monitor over here for. It controls the fertilizer rate, and uh, it was not loaded into the display. And so one of the handy things about using my John Deere for everything this year is that I can go uh, into my John Deere on my phone here, and um, export the file or send it to the tractor via the, uh, um, uh, what do they call it? My John Deere uh, machine sync, no, not machine sync, whatever it's called, through the MGT and um, JD Link, that's what it's called, JD Link. And it sent it right to me and I got it. So that was cool, I could fix it from the field rather than uh, not having it or having to run back to the farm. I wouldn't have run back to the farm. I would have just run a flat rate, but either way, we got what we needed. We're off and running. There is 88 acres in this field or 86 acres, something like that. Should take us about four hours, maybe a little bit more, which 3.30 puts us at uh, 7.30, probably 8 o'clock. If we can get done here by 8 o'clock, I'll be feeling pretty good. I noticed something wrong with that row. So I thought we better get out and check. like we got a rock Whoa. come on there we go got wedged in there just right all right we're moving along here i don't know if you guys can see it behind me or not but my auto steer has just a little bit of a wiggle to it, so I've been playing with my settings trying to adjust that a little bit. I don't know why it's doing it in this field. It didn't do it in the last field, at least I didn't notice it. Um, so I'm not sure what the deal is there. I don't know if it's from the way we chiseled this on a little bit of an angle and we're kind of going over the ridges a little bit and that's making the planter wander just a little bit or if the field kilometer pass or something. Um, I, th I think it's probably from being ripped on an angle and you just get a little bit of hard spots and soft spots or firmer and softer and that it just it just wiggles and meanders a little bit. Not a big deal, just noticeable to me. So um, working on that. But anyway, uh, sounds like the boys are going to come ride for a while tonight. So it's going to get crazy in here in a minute, which is fine. Because um, I'm not going to see them unless they do. So bring them on. Hi, bud. Okay, they don't need any help. How we doing, Grayson? We fight them on, boys. What's happening? 
this is the 8R. Oh, we need our steering wheel. All right. Who's ready to plant corn? Yeah, well, we got to drive up over here to plant. Right. And we need, tomorrow, we need to, we got to combine. Tomorrow what? We need to get the combine. Again. You think we're going to combine tomorrow? Yeah. No, we got to wait till the corn grows. It'll take a long time. Why do you have to take Okay, here we go. Why do we got the tank? The tank's got our fertilizer in it. What? See? Yep, I see. What is that? It's got fertilizer in it too. But that was almost out. Uh, kinda. Uh, How was your day, boys? Did you go to the new babysitter? Yeah. Yeah. Did you? What did you do there? You go to the playground? No. Yeah. Yeah. And hey. They had a church in there. A church in there. It's a playground at the church. Look at your cool shirt. I don't like it. I don't. Mommy doesn't like it, does she? Yeah, does. She does. Oh, well, okay. I can't wear that too. I know. It used to be yours. Now it's too small for you. No, I think you have a new job to your shirt. I don't, I don't try to when buy, mommy buy me a new shirt. Okay. We'll see if we can find you one. All right. We are, um, what are we? Ugh. 25 we? acres into this field. We got a ways Daddy, to go. That's Grandpa's kid. You think that's Grandpa over there? I don't think that's Grandpa. Yeah, I think that's Grandpa. I don't know where he would be going if he was over there. He's Grandpa. Maybe he's going to the farm. Well, the farm is that way. So the boys were just complaining about all these weeds out here in the field, and well, they're right. Um, there is a bunch. They're mostly pretty small yet, and uh, that's a result of us doing the tillage over a month ago. So yeah, weeds are going to grow. Uh, but I said, this gets in me. Um, I'm pretty sure that our Acuron, the corn herbicide, will take care of them. Dad bought some crop oil to add in to the Acuron, which kind of heats it up a little bit on stuff that's already growing. Why is and this so um, it that we shouldn't have any issues with the weeds around. If we do, we can always throw some Roundup in the tank. What are you doing to me? <laughs> can't talk. <laughs> warning? Where's our warning? Oh well, yeah, that tells you all the stuff you have to do to be careful in the tractor. Do what you take care of? Well, number one, it says read the operator's manual before operating the tractor. No, what does this one do? Safety. Warning. Level. That's our new thing. He points out all of the warning. <laughs> well, we're rolling right along here. Uh, we've got about 748. All right, 48 acres done. Uh, been here for just about, well, it says two hours with the planter in the ground, but it's 537. Pretty sure we started this or it was right about 3.30, wasn't it? Oh, Daddy. So, uh, I don't want you to we're, do uh, we're doing good. We should, we should be done with this field before eight o'clock, which that's a good thing, because we got a lot to do yet today. I was if things go as planned, I think I'll get done about four o'clock this morning tonight which is late we'll look at the weather forecast before i decide i'm going to stay up all night to plant corn uh and if it looks like we'll have some time tomorrow i won't do that but if it looks like it's going to rain at six o'clock in the morning then we're going to probably go until it rains or we get done with what we need to get done look at all those toesies so many so many you guys comfy watching your ipads yeah
has a deer? Yeah. Is it a John Deere? John Deere deer. <laughs> I think mom's on her way. Come get the boys. We've been here for a long time. It's almost seven o'clock. Oh, We're yeah. down to this. what are we down to? Nine acres to go in right. this field. Right there it's is the edge. The so won't uh yes. Yep, it does. That's for the warning lights. Won't take us too long here. It, uh, we're, work? we're doing real good. We're going to be done well before 8 o'clock. So maybe it'll be before 4 o'clock in the morning when I get done. Well, I don't know if you guys can see it, but it never quite works out just the way you want it to. We're on our last pass. Well, well, we're not on our last pass. We're on our last full pass, but we got a tiny little sliver. Probably going to be three rows that we stick in there, which is... I hate doing three rows because then I gotta make a whole pass to side dress it and it's a half a combine width and it's just not fun. But I'm not leaving that big of a gap. Oh well. Yep, three rows. Anyway, the rest of the planter width, you get a double shot of starter, so it ought to be extra good. Um, all right, well, mom is here. She's, she's, she's over there. So we're going to... Uh, drive up there and drop the boys off. I think she brought me some dinner and fold up and head to the next field. Dad got all the stuff that I need at the next field. We've got a lot of cleaning out to do because I'm switching varieties and I got way too much seed in there so that's going to be a pain in the butt um, but we'll figure it out and uh, go from there. Boys, it's the mom. Can you wave to her? Whoa, 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 whoa. Let me down first so I can help you. Well, all our stuff is here, seed and fertilizer that we need, so we're going to pull up and start loading fertilizer. I'm going to figure out what uh, we're going to put in for seed. Here's my problem, right? Sometimes I'm an idiot, and I, um, I plan too much. So we actually have three different varieties that are going down here in this 140 acres, and so we got to get the right combination of seed in the planter. Well, we got to get the seed out of the planter and then get the right seed in and field that we're going to and try and figure all that out and some of it is in bags some of it's in a box we're going to try and plant all of the stuff in paper bags first and then just throw the box in and we'll worry about cleaning it out later that way we only have to clean the planter out once but it's just it's kind of a mess right now so we'll do what we got to do so dad pre-mixed my fertilizer for me it's got all the components already in it so that's good we only need about 500 gallons for this first field that we're gonna go to. Not even that, but 500 will cover it. So I am putting that in, and then uh, uh, we're gonna work on the seed. After we plant the first one, we'll be out of seed again, so we'll come back and reload then. That way we're not carrying extra weight around. That was way too much work. Again, I'm stupid for doing this. I'll explain it in a minute, but all those bags up front are open. What I took out along with those I put 14 bags in the planter, different variety. I have one more of the same variety up on the platform. I'm not sure if I'll need it or not. And I put a couple more of another variety just in case we run really short. Um, but we're gonna go plant that field right there. And then we'll come back, load up more seed, more fertilizer, and go to the next one. But uh, should have what I need in my gloves so I can unhook my fertilizer hose there. All right, so now I'm caught up. I've got just a second here to explain what the deal is with the seed stuff. Um, so the field that we just finished, I planted 108 day corn. It's what we planted this morning as well. Um, it's very good corn, but these fields where we're at right now um, are close to town where we haul our grain. And so rather than hauling it 10 miles back to the farm and then 15 miles back here, we just take it the five miles right to town when we harvest in the fall, which means we want it to be fairly dry because we don't want to pay the drying charges at the elevator. And so, because of that, we, uh, we like to plant earlier maturing corn here. So I've got 104 day in the planter right now. The rest of the fields down here are going to get 103 day corn. And that's why I didn't want to just plant out what I had. If I would have had a scale on my seed tender that was working, I could have just put in what I needed to plant that last field. But that's what I'm dealing with right now. So hopefully we can get that fixed soon. But it is what it is. So, um, anyway, I have three different varieties going down here for dumb reasons. Um, one of them, I've only got 12 bags of it. It's all we've got and I want to test it against the other 
uh, early corns that we have, and since this is where I'm putting them, that's where I, or that's that's what I'm, that's what I'm doing. Uh, and then I don't think I was going to have enough of the other variety to plant all of it anyway, and so I had to put multiple hybrids down here just because of that. And so uh, this field's getting a variety. There's like 35 acres in this. There's 22-ish acres, I think, in another field that's getting that new 103 day. And then um, the rest of it's getting the, the older 103 that we, we've planted before. So we're going to plant the two separate ones first because I can just plant until I run out of seed. And then we'll put the whole box in and uh, just finish the rest of it and we'll see how it goes. So that did take me almost an hour to get that seed out of there, load the fertilizer, put the new seed in and all that, and drive here. Um, but still, it took way too long. So it's getting dark on me now. It's going to be a late night, but we're going to we're going to keep rolling here. This video feels like it's getting long. Gosh, look at that! And uh, I'm going to eat my dinner, so I'll check in with you guys in a long time, in a while. I'm just going to plan for a while. All right. Well, we're down to the last three acres in this field. My uh, low tank warning light is on. Just came on with about four to four and a half acres left, which is good. I usually figure I can get about five acres once that light comes on with corn. So uh, we're just about perfect on what we needed for seed. And uh, it is, what, 10 o'clock. So we'll go and uh, load up again, hopefully hopefully by 10.30, 10.45. We'll be pulling into the next field and, and moving. So got a, got a nice moon tonight. All right, load it up, ready to go. It's 10.30 exactly, so that went faster than the last time. The next one will be better because I don't have to do any bags. And we're just going to suck all the fertilizer that's left in the truck into the tank and put our box in and go. Well, it's about 11.30. We've officially crossed over 200 acres planted for the day because we had about 75 done before we started today and we're up to 278, so... Uh, we're having a good day considering we didn't start till after 10. Uh, that's good. Checking the radar, there is some rain to the north. I don't know if any of that's going to get here overnight or first thing in the morning or not. I'm really hoping that that sort of breaks apart and it looks like I can go to bed at like maybe 2 or something and come back at 7 in the morning and finish this rather than working until 4 or 5. So, I don't know. We're going to keep an eye on it keep going for a while here yet but uh, we're doing good we've got 12 and a half acres left to do in this field before we got to fill up for the last time and then we can just plant until we don't want to plant anymore or we get done done with this field uh, so we had our low tank warning lights on again we're out of seed that was the goal we were supposed to have just the right amount to plant this and we did so I'm heading back across the road we're gonna fill up again here's the thing I've been editing today's video and we're already at like 37 minutes or more. So I'm gonna go ahead and end with this one here because, well, it is 12.07 a.m. So we're just gonna call it tomorrow and I'm gonna start tomorrow's video right now and you guys can catch me there. So thanks for watching this one. Uh, tomorrow's morning's, tomorrow morning's video starts, you know, where we're gonna be loading up here and I have no idea what's going on tomorrow. Depends on, uh, the rain and everything else. I do have the boys, or me and dad have the boys, I guess. So we'll figure all that out as we go. I'm gonna be out here for a while yet, and uh, we're getting a lot done, so that's good. So thanks for watching, like, subscribe. See you guys tomorrow.